thing to listen the word of God. And may the Lord be blessed all brothers and sisters around this country. And we are going to enjoy it with the blessed of the blessing of the Holy Spirit this morning meditation or this second hour. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the title of this meditation is Don't Miss the Target. And it's something that has to do with the Word of God, of course. Um, something happened more or less um, 3,000 years ago and more. And the other episode happened around 2,000 years. Yeah. If you get the word of God, then you can read. In the book of Samuel, First Samuel, and the chapter is 17. We are trying to go step by step with this uh, encounter that happened to God's people many, many years ago. And says, verse one ahead. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shosho, which belongs to Judah, and pitched between Shosho and Aseka, and Aphes Darmin. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Ela, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath, of God, whose high was six cubits and a span. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head. And he was armed with a coat of knife, and the weight of his quad was and shekels of brass. That's around five kilos, 55 kilos. And he had graves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulder. Yes, this man was very well armed, ready for a, a battle. He was very much um, accustomed to struggle, to fight. And then he challenged the Israelites. He went out and challenged the Israelites. Yes, who will fight with a giant three meters high? That's not very easy, of course. The normal height of the people in those days, I guess, were more or less two meters. But this man was three meters. And any soldier, have to think very careful how can really defeat this giant because it was not very easy. And he was protected from head to feet. Uh, not very easy to target him with sword or with spears. And, and you have to really be a, a good soldier, very well trained, that you can uh, struggle with this, with this man, no doubt. And, but God was working in a different way, my dear brothers and sisters. Always God works his way, and his way is very different than our ways. Then in the mountains or not high mountains but maybe little mountains there was a boy 
He was a chef. And God was talking to him. This, uh, this boy was already anointed as a new king for Israel, but was not popular his anointing. Practically only his family were aware about the anointing of this young man. And God said, go to the camp of Israel and do my battle, do my, my struggle. I will be with you, no problem. You will defeat that giant. And then after the instruction, of course, given to David, um, he managed to go to see the army. Because in the army, there were no less than three soldiers, brothers of David. And the father gave him some charge, food, presents, and he went to, the, to that area. When he arrived there, then uh, this giant was coming through, defiant and ready to fight. And the soldiers, Saul and all his mighty men were not going to face this man. That's what the record of the scripture said from 17 first Samuel say to us. And after Samuel, after David given all his stuff to the people in charge, then he went to listen to the man. And he was not very happy because no soldiers can face this man. That's a problem, my dear brothers and sisters. When there is no, no people to defend the honor of God's people, things are not very beautiful, of course. Um, but David say, I will, I will come and I will fought this man, not a problem. And the brethren, they were not very happy with him. According to the spirit of prophecy, they were not very happy with him. And even the Bible say, you come here only to see what is going on with this battle, with this uh, encounter. Why are you not keeping the lambs, the sheep there in the mountain? Why, why you have to come here? Yes. But they don't know that God already sent him. Yes, brothers and sisters, be sure God is leading you. He's telling you what to do and what not to do. If you are in the hands of God, then you are safe. That's why David was there. And then David was presented to Saul. And was told Saul that this young lad, this young man was ready to fight. And of course, many of those soldiers, rough soldiers, they laughed on him because he was very, he was a handsome boy. And even he was in the mountains, he keep still his appearance as a very pretty, handsome boy. And the simplicity of this man was really touching everyone, especially Saul. Then Saul dressed him with all the armor that, that David can defend himself. And he tried, he tried to walk with all those things, but uh, he said, no, King Saul, I am not accustomed to this. Let me go more easy, more free. And you will see what I will do with this giant. Well, he 
he commend him to the mercy of God, of course. And I guess many soldiers were praying for this young David. That's really amazing. And you know very well the story that David presents himself to the giant. And the giant, of course, mocked him because he was a very simple, simple boy to fight a very experienced warrior. And he said, okay, approach me and I will give your flesh to dogs and the force of the air. And you know that David answered, yes, you come to me with all that armor on your body. But God has told me that I will give your body today to the force of the air and to the wild beast. Yes. And don't miss the target. That's very, very important, my dear friends. Don't miss the target. David was a very experienced man with his sling to throw stones. This, this boy know what to do. He was questioned by Saul and by the soldiers how he can fight against that man. And he said, for me, that will be nothing because I fought bears, I fought lions, I fought any wild animal, and I destroyed them. And if they bother me too much, I kill them. Without much trouble. Good. Then uh, he ran. He ran to the giant. Before that, he got five, I guess, plain stones. And he put one in his sling and threw to him, to the giant. And it is written in the Spirit of Prophecy that the Holy Spirit was after this. The angel of the Lord was after this. And imagine what happened. That's why I say, don't miss the target. The head, my dear brothers and sisters, even of that giant, was maybe 30, 40 uh, centimeters wide. Was a big fellow. And this stone had to really kill the man. And that happened. You know what happened to this man? His shell he put in the back. He was arrogant. The protection to protect the head and the face, he practically put in the back of the helmet. And this is what David was instructed. This man is so arrogant that he will discover his front head and in that area you are going to throw the stone with your sling and that happened. And you know, the stone was just in the front head and went in like a bullet. The soldiers, the Egyptian soldiers and the Israelite soldiers they practically were not very much aware of what was going to happen. No, they were in the very expectative looking, no right and left, but suddenly the giant collapsed. Like he was paralyzed, like he was taken by, by a disease, by a heart attack. Yes, brothers and sisters, all our life must be in the hands of God. And, but this can be done by prayer, by reconciling with God, by getting close to God. Then everything go well, go beautiful, no problem. The man was dead. David then ran to him he don't go the sword, he got only his sling and got close for sure. 
put his leg on top of the chest, rise up the sword of Goliath that was a mighty sword, very heavy. For sure, David had to hold that sword with two hands and cut the head of the giant. Yeah, this is, this is what the Lord is inviting you and me to do against Satan. Don't miss the target. We have a responsibility as Christians before humanity. This is a very serious conquest. This is a very serious struggle. Our Christian life is not a washy-washy life. Cannot be like that, my dear brothers and sisters. Or we are building with God, or we are building with the enemy. Very nice. The story is that David took the head of this giant and went to the camp of the, of the Hebrews as victorious, victorious, very victorious soldier. Practically from that moment on until today, this history. No, this record or this experience is mentioned anywhere on this earth. It's amazing. I like very much what happened to this young man. He was not a soldier, but he was God's servant. That's, the, that's what is important. Be sure you are God's servant. Wherever you are, be God's servant. And then you will see the blessings after blessings, of course. Now, we come to Ephesians. In Ephesians, is register also something very important. And it's something similar with the armor of a soldier. Paul had to mention, because that is still is uh, in function, I will say, until today, chapter six of Ephesians. And then we read from verse 10 ahead. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the vice of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the of the world again, a spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet is Choose with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Interesting, brothers and sisters. Yes. Um, the soldiers, they have equipment and they have a lot of protection too, of course. Vulnerable. But is the head. If you lose your head, <laughs> how you will 
how you will manage to face other things. Don't lose your head, my dear brothers and sisters. No, keep it very fresh head that you can really accumulate good thoughts. If we have hot head, then we can lose very easy temper. We can lose, um, how do you say, conformity. We need very much to have fresh head. But your, your feet must be hot. If your head is hot and your feet are cold, you can collapse any moment. Yes. Then those parts of the body are very, very important. Protect your arms, protect your chest, protect every part of the body. Yes. That's necessary for. For the Christians, um, Paul also mentioned those who run the race. And we are running a race for eternal life, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord wants us to be victorious. Everything, every part of our body is important and is our responsibility to care for it. If we know how to eat, then we are healthy. If we know how to work, then we are healthy. The body needs also hours to sleep. If you sleep only one hour, two hours, three hours per night, that's not helping you, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't think that your body is uh, going to resist giving no sleep to the body. No less than eight hours we have to spend in a very good sleep. Then your nerves, your nerves, your blood, your every part of the body is functioning beautiful, correct? Yes. There are good things to drink to have good health. I can recommend to all of you uh, teas of herbal plants. Uh, I mean herbal teas that are very healthy for the nerves, for the heart, for the stomach. Yes. We need that very much. But if you drank soft drink, Orange soft drink, no? Yes, it's palatable. It's good here for the test, but no more. That will practically make your stomach suffer situations very unnecessary. Then we have to also take care of the way we think. The head, my dear brothers and sisters, has a brain. And in that brain, that, that brain, I guess, I hear my wife telling that it's around three kilos. And in that, in that uh, very sophisticated sub substance are created wonderful things. Men tried by computers, very, very sophisticated, produce better word than brain, but that's impossible. That will never happen. Your brain, your brain has more accurate work and can, can put together in your brain things that you will never forget from your childhood. If you want to be free from Alzheimer's or the other disease that made your brain blank, dementia, then we have to really help our brain to be busy with very healthy things. And then you can remember 
issues that happened when you was a child. Yes. There is nothing wrong to remember beautiful things when you was a child. Mm. And you can talk about those things are healthy. That will prevent you from suffering Alzheimer's. But the type of medicine that is given to people today, plus the food, very artificial, synthetic food, no, that provoke terrible diseases in the body of people. They are now 40, 50 years old, and they began with a lot of deficiencies. And when they become 60, 70 years old, they become shaking all around. That's because the food they consume and the medicine they eat every day. Yes. But we can avoid all those things. That's why Paul is telling you and me, you know, people who are preparing for heaven, food protection, every part of the body, your legs, your arms. Yes. I hear I hear uh, several times children, not here, of course, in Australia, because <laughs> we don't have many children, but in many places of the world, when I have been present in conferences or services, I hear children singing. And one of the, one of the, how do you say, little music they play, they try was about, look about your eyes, look about your mouth. Look about your ears. Look about your thoughts. Look about your legs, your arms. What are you doing? Yes, this is a real, very important, very important matter that have to make Christians be responsible for what they are doing, what they are thinking, what they are think, uh, talking. Yes, it's our responsibility. When a teacher go to a school, must prepare very well his class. He cannot go there to talk to the children, boys and girls, anything he, he improvise. No, he have to prepare everything to give a good class. As Sister Paula, no, when, when she give classes to the children, if she's not well prepared, then very easy that students will come to conclusion. We know more than the teacher. We are more prepared than the teacher. I remember, because I was also in that, in that profession. We have to know very well you know, what we are trying to present, or because we are forming boys and girls for the future, for the future, for, to work on this head. Yes, why Goliath was defeated? Can you help me why Goliath was defeated? Oh, he was three meters man, very powerful, no? Every part was very well managed, no? But there was something not very very good for this man. Arrogant. Arrogant, selfishness, proud. This man was pride. That's why he discovered the front head. And that was used by David because in that very moment, with his sling, throw the stone and just on the front head, remain inside the brain, inside the skull, and kill the man. Yes, brothers and sisters. No? Arrogance. Selfishness, pride, don't help us very much. The Bible teach us many, many times to be simple, to be humble, yes, in every aspect of our life. Really amazing. I like very much the word of God, the way, tell us, you no, know, teach us what to do on this earth. Yes. 
is good to have healthy body, no doubt. But healthy body can be maintained by exercise, good exercise. Yes. Now today, for example, there are a lot of houses where you can go and pretend to walk in those machines. Yes, you pretend to walk. And then heavy lift and this and that. But that's not the same working, doing something profitable, working, no? Doing a work, physical work, is not the same like those little rooms where you can do a lot of exercise. Yeah? It's good to do exercise, but the best is walking. I can see here in front of my house from early morning, ladies, all ladies, already walking very early in the morning, six in the morning, raining or with, or with good weather. They walk and walk and walk. Yes. And I, I can see that those ladies sometimes are like my age, around 80 years. And they they do their life. It's good. Yes, brothers and sisters. No? For our benefit, for the goodness of our life and our health, no? We must do profitable things, healthy things. That's why the Lord put in the body the head. The head is the controller of the whole body. There you can accumulate all the knowledge no, in, that is necessary to live. Once you learn, once you learn professions after professions, that's accumulate in the brain. You don't need to carry in your shoulders, that's in the brain. Yes. Other way, other way, <laughs> we can do nothing, no? There are, there are girls that they don't know how to broom the house. They don't know. They don't know how to wash a piece of cloth, no? Or iron. Why? Why they don't do that? Why? Ah, because they have vacuum. They have washing machine. There is a lot of <laughs> things that made the people ah, lazy. They can have plenty of time to watch television hours and hours and hours. They put the machines to work. Yes. But in many places, it's not like that, right, and sisters. That's why ladies can go and reach even 100 years still working. Yes. Only God can help us to understand how important it is to have a body, but healthy body. No, a body that can perform all responsibilities. Yes, why not? We, we, we don't depend very much on others. Yeah, maybe. People got plenty of money and then they can have servants, but we don't have servants here very much. No? Some for certain certain responsibilities or duties. But most of the time people have to achieve their responsibility. Yes. Only God can help us. No. Please keep reading First uh, Samuel 17, 18. And chapter 6 of Ephesians. Read. It's important. Very important. To know exactly what the Lord wants from me. From my health. From my arms, legs, head. Yes. And then others will appreciate very much your effort. And will be very happy and thankful. Because you are helping them. You are doing your best no? to encourage others to be useful. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord encourage us always to prayer, to meditation, to study the word of God. That's my wish and pray in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.